stages for a lot longer than that. Um, I'm going to refer throughout my presentation to what's called the Municipal Sustainability Model. And I, I've got a few copies with me, but I'm going to post it on the Vancouver Fair Tax Coalition website. And we believe that there, there's fundamental principles in, in this piece of work that should bring sustainability, should bring tax relief to all classes of properties, residential and commercial, and create a tax model that has accountability uh, as well as fairness. So given my mantra is around sustainability, I have a sustainability definition, and my definition is sustainability is the result of acting of, sorry, the result of the act of balancing the three essential elements of social, economic, and environment in the best interest of the constituents, but not at the expense of future generations. <coughs> Sustainable tax models will bring down taxes for businesses and for residential property taxpayers. Um, there's been some innuendo that businesses are right now asking for a tax break. We're not asking for a tax break. We're asking for a shift to fairness. Um, and I'll get into that as we go along here. Um, if business properties pay something less than property taxes, it's not going to change the budget. So the fact that there's a shift a, a, a away from business towards residents does not solve the problem in the budget. And, and to suggest that any shift has something to do with the overall budget size it is a misunderstanding of how the system works. Um, tax payer, taxpayers uh, have accepted year after year uh, increases in taxes, and it's 4.5% average per year for 10 years, and every year more and more and more, 3%, 5%, 6%, we move to 9%. The problem is this, we have 168,000 residential properties in the city of Vancouver to absorb that increase. We have 13,500 commercial properties. 169,000 purchased 13,000, paying 50-50 share of the burden. So keep loading up the taxes on a very small portion of properties, and you create an unsustainable model. Taxpayers, um, the key to this issue is that municipal budgets would be less if we charge the respective classes the actual cost of the services they consume. And this is the consumption-based tax model that we believe will bring sustainability. To be more blunt, I would say, if residents were charged for the services they consume, they would consume less. If less services were demanded, then the total budget would go down. This is a basic principle that people will consume more if the services are cheap. It's not environmental nor sustainable to run a city based upon providing services at less than they cost, and that will result in providing services for which there is little demand. We believe that taxation ought to be based on consumption received by each class rather than an arbitrary allocation based upon political whims. Be clear, this is not the actual incidence of the consumption of a specific service, rather this is the standby availability of services to a particular class of property based upon the consumption patterns that class of property has exhibited. All right, so we have two main classes of property. You have residential properties and you have business properties. The city of Vancouver has engaged KPMG and MMK twice, once in 1995 and secondly in 2006, to study the consumption of municipal services by the residents and by the businesses. And in 1995, they said residents are consuming 72% of the services, and in 2006, they said they're consuming 76% of the services. The problem we have is we have 8% of the properties in the city of Vancouver that are paying for 50% of the services. That's not sustainable, it's not fair, and there's no accountability. So if you made residents pay for the cost of services that they receive or consume, and the costs were very high, you would find accountability at the political level. And this would bring down budgets. 
in my view. We accept the principle, and in fact, you'll find throughout the sustainability model that businesses have the ability to deduct uh, property taxes from, from their income tax remittance, and accept that we should pay greater than the share we consume for the ability to deduct uh, taxes. The consumption models right now suggest that business properties consume 24%, and the, the marginal income tax rate on small business uh, suggests that we should pay upwards of 30 to 32% as opposed to the 24% we consume. There's around 615, 20,000 residents in the city of Vancouver, and there's 400,000 eligible votes in the city of Vancouver. There's 49,000 business licenses in Vancouver with zero votes. There's no accountability. The BSC, BFTC uh, are trying to shed light on a situation that's gone unchecked for <coughs> two decades. We're not asking for a tax break. We're asking to bring some reality back to the distribution of taxation based upon the physical makeup of our cities and the demand for those services. It's, it, it will probably surprise you that in the past five years, we've added 18,000 new residential properties in the city of Vancouver. In the same five years, we've added, well, lost 12 commercial properties. Up 18,000, down 12 in five years. That 18,000 compares to commercial properties total 13,000. So their new properties in five years is 40% higher than all of our properties we've got. So again, going back, 169,000 against uh, 16,000. Um, there's been some suggestion, and, and I've noted on the Think City website, about uh, giving small businesses or, or business properties uh, lower taxes will drive up their values and in the end result in them paying higher taxes because of these higher values. Um, that's not correct on a couple of levels. Um, firstly, uh, the, the incidence of tax shifting so far is relatively insignificant to the value of the properties and it is unsubstantiated that value increases have occurred. If it does happen and values increased by some small incremental amount, it actually has no relevance to the amount of taxes that commercial properties pay because it's a fixed levy system. An apportionment of taxes is given to the business classes and if the value of those properties go up, they don't pay any more taxes, they still pay the same amount. So that's just a little bit of a clarity on that issue. Um, <clears throat> on a, one last point I wanted to raise is the issue of big business versus small business, and uh, it gets raised at a number of different uh, forums. It's something that our 45,000 members are dead against. Uh, we do not believe one should discourage large employers over small employers um, to, to create a tax regime that, can, that discourages large employers from our communities uh, would be driving the customers from the smaller employers' businesses away or to somewhere else. Um, you should also be aware that 86% <coughs> is that for me? 86 of uh, businesses in Canada are under 20 people. 88% of businesses in downtown Vancouver have less than 20 employees. 88%. So this big, small argument is about employers and to Try and differentiate between the two is impossible, and it's not logical to drive out our big employers. Okay. The current administration, undertaking the Vancouver Service Re Services Review, is doing an excellent job. Uh, we applaud their efforts. Um, I will bring some further light to ideas we have around the five administrative performance categories uh, within the municipal budget that we believe will shed light on their further savings. <coughs>